Hello or welcome back. In our previous video, uh, we have seen how to use the IP integrator available in Vivado to integrate different IP calls and build an entire system. So in this video, what I'm trying to show you is how to create your own IP call. Okay. So how to start from Vidlog and finally get the block description or block level representation of your IP. Uh, that's what I'm trying to cover in this video. So we'll start with a very simple IP actually basically an IP to control the switches and LED similar to the GPIO IOD that you have used. But later we will have more complex IP like once we complete our OLED controller code we will convert it into IP format so that you can directly control the OLED from the processor through software. Now, when you design an IP, one of the first questions is what should be the interface of the IP? I'm not talking specific to Vivado, but uh, in system on chip design, in general, whenever you design an IP, you need to decide how your IP will be integrated with the rest of your system. Now, our aim is to build something which will be interface with the PS part of Zinc and the only interface available to PS is AXE4 interface. So we'll be designing our IP which has an AXE4 interface. Now another question will be whether your IP should be a master or a slave. So in most of the time your IP will be a slave. That means all the AXE transactions, read and write operations will be initiated by the processor and your IP will be just following uh, whatever transaction is coming from the processor. But in certain cases, your IP has to be a master. Uh, this is specifically true if your IP has to access the external DDR connected to Zinc chip through the HP port of PM. In that case, your IP has to be a, a master. So that we'll see later. The IP that we are going to design today is a simple GPIO IP. So that will be a, a slave IP. Yeah, so these are the two important factors. Another important thing, again, in last lab, you have seen actually how an IP works, what is inside an IP. Uh, basically, uh, you will have a core logic of the IP. And uh, there will be a number of registers actually inside an IP. So the processor is actually reading and writing from these registers. And based on the register values, uh, some other things may be happening. Okay, so the actual interface to the processor is through the registers inside the IP. Now, how many registers should be an I inside an IP depends upon uh, the functionality of the IP. So again, at design stage, we will decide how many registers should be there, what each register is supposed to do, and what should be the address for each register so on and so forth okay so i hope it will be clearer once we complete our, our current project so as i mentioned before we are going to design an ip for controlling leds and switches so my basic plan is i will have a register inside the ip and this register I will connect to the pins of the IP, external interface of the IP, which will be subsequently connected to the LEDs on the board. So if the processor wants to control the LED, it just has to write to this register. So basically I need one register to interface with the LED. Now another register might be interface with the switches. So if the processor wants to read the switch uh, position, whether how many are on or off, just has to read from the second register so basically i need only two registers one set of registers connected to led and the other set of uh, other register what a set of register other register connected to the slide switches okay so that's my my whole requirement so let's see how do you start so uh, i am starting it as a new project again And I'm calling my project, let's say, IP generator project or something. <clears throat> I'm keeping it as a subdirectory and 
for our standard settings. Okay, so once you get this window, you should go to Tools and choose Create and Package New IP. And you will get this wizard and uh, here you have multiple choices and uh, since we are going to create a axi slave IP you should choose this option create axi4 peripheral create new axi4 peripheral okay choose that option next and here again this is an industry standard tool Mivado. so you can specify uh, the name of the IP, the name of your company, what your IP does, all the information here. So I'm going to call my IP as, okay, let's say a GPIO a control. That's the name of the IP. This is the first version, initial version. And you can write the description here, IP to control LEDs and switches now here this is a very important setting so Vivado is basically asking where the files generated for this IP should be stored okay so that you should be very careful so I would suggest you create a separate folder and inside that folder you create subfolders where you will store your files associated with the individual IP okay so what I'm doing is in D drive and I have created a new folder called IP repo inside that let me create a new folder and let me call it uh, GPIO control so all my IPs will be stored in this IP repo folder and I will put them in different different subfolder as I create them now next and here basically he's asking what should be the name of the axi slave interface to your IP so when you add your IP to your GUI in the block design it will look like this so he's asking what this interface should be called it doesn't matter what you call it so keep it s0 axi interface type this you should read the axi documentation there are actually three kinds of axi available light full and stream so for medium performance axi light interface is good enough if you want high performance communication will have to go with uh, axi full because it supports something called the uh, burst transfer so i'm doing a, a simple ip so i'm keeping light and this is where you choose the mode whether your ip should be a master or a slave you have slave data width it is 32 fixed and how many registers should be there inside your IP so the minimum number supported here is 4 now you will get the original source code for this IP there you can you can change the number of registers and all but in the GUI uh, although I need only 2 I cannot set 2 so we have to go with the 4 so keep it 4 and next and this step is important again when you come to this last page there is an option called edit ip okay so basically what happens is vivada will open a new project where you will be able to see the source code for the ip that you are generating and you will be able to edit that source code okay and uh, save it if you want to make any changes to your ip so choose this option edit ip and click finish now if you go to the folder where i specified to create the ip this one you will see like a lot of files have been created and you will see a project called edit gpio control dot xpr okay so this project is automatically created and vivado opens that project also this is that project edit gpio control where where you will be able to edit the weight lock source code and other settings then you'll have this folder gpio control 1.0 inside that again you will see a bunch of folder and a file called component.xml so as far as an ip is concerned the most important file is this one component.xml this is a xml file okay 
Now, <coughs> this file stores all the information about your IP in a text format. For example, it has information about what is the interface type, what are the different signals belonging to this interface, where your source codes are stored, all these information are stored in this XML file. So as far as silence is concerned, when they say the, the IP file, uh, in most cases, they mean this file, computer.xml. And the data stored here follows a particular standard called the IP exact standard. This one, IP exact. This is again an industry standard for storing information about IP codes, not only in Vivado, this is an industry standard across different tools. Now in the other folders, you will see there is a folder called HDL. Inside that, there are two files automatically created. This has the video code for your IP. There is another folder called driver, which has some C sample code for testing your IP using SDK. It also has uh, BD folder, which has information about the block design, how to integrate your IP when you're using it in a block design. It also has a folder called XGUI, which has the information about how your IP should be shown like a block when you go to the block design, the graphical information about your IP. Okay, so this folder is very important. This is the most important folder. All others are temporary folders actually you can delete them if you wish to but keep them there <coughs> now, as i mentioned before uh, from that original project once you choose edit ip vivado automatically creates this new project and he opens it and this is how it will look like when you open first time now here in the in the window you can see a lot of information about your ip uh, for example the company which is producing this IP. Now by default it will be Xilinx. If you have your own company you can give your company name and the name of your IP, the version description, all the information. It also has information about which FPGA this IP is targeting. Okay so this should be some uh, domain name it seems. Okay, so let's call it vapinc.com or something. Okay. So it is basically saying this IP is compatible with zinc. Okay, so the IP compatibility is with reference to the chip, not with reference to the port. So this IP can be used with any zinc chip any zinc chip basically now if you want to make it compatible with other families of chip okay you can do it i can add here and add other fpgs these are all different fpgs from xilinx so what happens is later when you when you or other people try to use your ip in a particular project vivada will always check whether this ip is compatible with this particular chip and uh, if not he won't let you add that to the project under file group you will see uh, all the information which all files are part of this ip this is the vidlog source code for your ip these are the simulation source which is same vidlog source the example c code he automatically added ui layer this is the graphical information block diagram so basically all these files are coming from this folder Okay, so they are automatically listed. <coughs> Customization parameter, we'll come to that later. Ports and interfaces, the port to your IP is AXI interface. This is an AXI slave interface. And addressing and uh, memory, again, uh, not very relevant here. When you add it to the block design, you will see like the base address and the high address for your IP automatically coming and GUI how your IP will look it will look like this in the block design okay now from where this screen is coming this screen is actually coming from this component.xml file the, 
this file that you saw here. So if you open it in a text editor, this is how that file looks like. But when that file is opened in Vivado, okay, this file, when you double click this file in Vivado, this is how it looks like. So basically, Vivado, Vivado reads information from this XML file and extracts the information and shows it to you. Okay. That's it. Now, let's look at the video code. Okay. So basically, uh, Vivado, he will generate two files for you. One file will be called the name of the IP that you gave, .v and it will instantiate another module called name of your ip underscore name of the axi interface in this case s00 axi instance now what these files are basically doing is it automatically implements the logic for interfacing your ip with axi4 interface so if any axi so this is the axi slave interface actually you can see many signals are there the nice thing is you don't have to remember the axi protocol so any read or write operation coming through the axi interface will go through this interface and the code for following that protocol is already provided by Sinex. Now, if you come to this file inside this top file you you will see some parameters are declared here for example saxe address width is for saxe data width is 32 so it's going to use 32 bit data the address it is going to use is lower 4 bit now you will see why it is so it is because uh, the number of registers that you asked to instantiate within this IP is 4. That's why this number became 4 there. Now let's see here. Yeah, if you come to this line 107, you can see they have already declared four registers here: slave reg0, slave reg1, slave reg2, slave reg3, right? And their width, each of them is 32 bit wide fine now if you come a little bit further you will find the code where data is written into this register so it, it looks a bit complicated actually uh, because they are using a lot of for loops and all but actual code is uh, very simple actually now basically what is written here is if slave reg write enable is high so this signal will become high whenever the processor wants to write to a axi slave IP and the address of that IP is matching okay so you can see on the top how this signal is generated this is not a standard axi signal but these are axi signals actually coming from the axi interface so if write valid write address ready again write data valid and write data ready if all these conditions are true this signal will become high you will have to read the axi for protocol specification to understand what each signals are but basically they all become high whenever the processor is writing so if the signal is high they are checking the address coming from the processor okay so if the address coming from the processor after subtracting the base address from that address and dividing it by four that is this guy if that is zero whatever data is coming from the processor gets stored in slave reg zero if it is one whatever coming from processor is in slave reg 1, slave reg 2, slave reg 3. Otherwise, if there is no write operation, every register keeps its previous value. Okay, so basically, this is the part where data coming from the processor gets to into an internal register. Same way, if you come a little bit down, 
this is the part where the register data is going to the processor so you will see the code is quite similar here he is checking the read address from the processor and if the read address minus base address divided by 4 you are dividing it by 4 because each register is 4 bytes actually so the addresses increases by 4 from processor point of view but inside the hardware the addresses are incrementing by 1 so this is the logic for doing that anyway so if the processor is reading from address 0 content of register 0 goes here which subsequently goes to the processor same way if reading from address 1 register 1 goes to the processor here register 2 goes to the processor register 3 goes to the processor okay so this is the code which is provided by Silex. okay so this is a basic template for reading and writing from registers through axi interface now depending upon your application what you want to do using your ip you will have to add something to this code or you have to modify code so and convey it to the processor so that's what my a so that that additional information i will have to add so how do we do it so if i go to the again the first file here you will see the inputs and outputs from my ip and you will notice the only input output is the axi interface even in the gui also you can see this is how gui look like the only interface to the ip is the is the axi interface now what additional interface i need i need a additional interface to the leds eight wires i need an additional interface to the switches eight wires so that i can interface uh, this ip to leds and switches so I'm going to add that information here. So what I'm doing is, okay, use port, add ports here. So there is a comment here. You can add actually wherever you want, but better I add wherever signing has list to add. So I will say output seven down to zero. Let's and uh, input. 7 down to 0 switches. So I'm adding these two additional interface to my IP. This I did in the top file. Next what I should do, these LEDs should be connected to register 0 so that whenever processor writes something to register 0 that gets reflected using the LEDs. So these wires I have to somehow connect to register 0 which is inside this module inside this module okay so basically i will add these ports here also so leds leds and switches switches okay so i added them here for instantiation that means I should also add them here also so same thing I will add here also add here also output LEDs input switches now what I will do I will just write okay somewhere here you can add whatever you want assign led is equal to slave reg zero see so now whenever processor writes to slave reg zero that will go here to these wires which is going as output from this module that will come here it will come here and will finally go as output okay so LEDs were easier now switches are a little bit tricky so I have switches coming as input through pins 
and I need to connect them to the register one now I already have a logic to write something to the register one here okay so this this code as we discussed before is for the processor to write to register one I don't want processor to write to register one I want to write the position of the switches to register one so what you should do you need to modify this part of the code now remember the rule you cannot have more than uh, same same register in more than one always block so you cannot you cannot Okay, you cannot just write like this because the problem is this condition is under this condition. If slave right, right is one and if address is one, then switch equal to slave right one. This doesn't make sense because this basically means if the processor is writing and if the address is matching, then the content of switch should go to slave register one. No, what I want is the switches. Okay, should be always connected to slave reg one. So what I'll do is I will take this slave reg one from here and I will just put it under this always block outside this condition. I will put it outside this condition and I will remove this code which corresponds to writing data from processor to slave reg one. I am putting it here. Okay, slave reg zero is perfectly fine. I want the processor to write to slave reg zero so that that goes to the LED, makes sense. But slave reg one, I don't want the processor to write there. I want the data from the switches to be directly uh, stored there. Now two and three, we are not going to use it, so let them be there. And this code, it is fine. This basically means slave reg one retains the previous value. If you wish, you can delete this also. Now things looks perfectly fine. This code is correct, but usually what we'll do is we write this entire thing as a separate always block so that the code is more readable actually so I am taking it from there and I'm putting it here and also this reset condition I'm copying it there and I'm cutting it here because you cannot have slave reg one inside two always blocks so I'm taking it from there and I'm putting it here, begin, end, else, begin, end, end. <coughs> okay, now this looks much better. That's it. So we have done, we have edited the IP source code. Now what is the thing? If you make any modification to the source code, okay, you need to update things in this component.xml file. So you need to double click here. And when you come here, you will see those green tick marks have gone here and it's showing some picture of the file. That means you have modified something in the IP source code. So you, you go here and click merge changes from file group wizard and uh, everywhere actually. Okay. And you'll see now they are back to green. Now the interesting thing is if you come to GUI here, now you will see it is showing LEDs and switches here. Now Xilinx, they follow a, a certain style. The outputs will be always listed on the right. 
and the inputs will be left listed on the left that's why switches are on the left and leds are on the right so later whenever you use your ip in the block design this is how your ip is going to look like okay now come back to review and package and you need to click repackage so that all these changes are updated in the competent.xml but there is an important step before that you need to click on this one edit packaging settings and there is this option check here delete project after package okay by default this is checked that means once you click repackage ip he will he will save all your changes and this project will close edit gpa or control dot xpr project will close and that project will be deleted also now the problem with that is later if you want to again update your ip if you want to change any modification it will be very difficult because you don't have this vivado project to do it you will have to create a new project and add all the source code there and it could be a big headache so make sure this is unchecked so that when this project is closed this project is not deleted and if you want to make any modification later you can always come back and double click and open and make all the modification okay so if it is uh, make sure it is unchecked and okay and click repackage it so he he will say like finish packaging he has updated all the information to this file component.xml now you can close the project okay okay so this is our original project from where we started so i i created an ip from here so he created an ip he opened a new vivado project for editing that ip i used that project to edit my ip then i repackaged it i saved it okay i saved the ip and that's it and all that information is actually sitting inside this fold and component.xml is sitting inside this fold now let's try to use that ip in a block design okay so i am using the same project ip generator project.xpr okay create a block design and let's try to add our new ip to this project okay so first let me add the processing system okay we can type zing processing system and automation block automation and add ip remember our ip name was i think gpio control remember gpa control so that is automatically listed here so just double click it and you can see our ip here
Okay, now let's try to use our IP in a block design. Okay, so Okay, now let's try to use our IP in a block design. So we already have this project open from we, where we actually started our initial IP generation under tools, create and package new IP. But, uh, but to make things clearer, let me create a new project actually. And uh, let me call it test uh, my GPIO something. Okay, I'm creating a completely new project. And let me close that initial project. Okay, so in future also, whenever I want to create a new IP, I will go and uh, start from this IP generator project and choose create a new IP. Then I get a new project, I will create the IP there, close it. Okay, so this project I am going to use just as a uh, base reward of project to start a new IP. That's it, nothing else. Okay, so here let's come to create block design like we did in last lab. And choosing processing system. Block automation, okay. And let me try to add our new IP, which is GPIO control, right? GPIO control. Now you'll see like that IP is not listed. We have only exit GPIO, which is the signings GPIO IP. So this is the thing. By default, your IP will not be listed in the IP category. You need to tell Vivado which all location he should search for user-defined IP or IPs created by you. So what you should do is you should go to settings and there is an option here, IP, and there is IP repository. And you need to browse and go to the folder where you have kept this component.xml file. Now the good thing is he will keep on searching in subdirectory after subdirectory. So it is enough to show him this folder, IP repo, and he will go inside that and keep on searching. So that's why I created a folder called IP repo and I'm going to keep all my IPs as subfolders here so that I just add this folder and Vivado will find out all the IPs within this folder. Okay, so I'm going there and I'm choosing this one, IP repo, select, and you can see like he actually found my IP. GPIO control version one. Okay, okay. Now if I click here and search for GPIO, my IP is also listed. So double click it. It comes to the block design, you can see uh, it looks exactly uh, like the GUI one we saw when we created the IP. You can click Run Connection Automation and uh, it gets connected to the processor. Okay, so this one is connected to the interconnect, which is actually connected to the processor. This is the clock. This is the reset. The only thing which are not connected are these two the LEDs and switches. Okay, so unlike Vivado's GPIO controller, they do not automatically get connected to LEDs and switches that you have to do manually. So what you should do is you need to click on this interface, right click and say, make external. So basically you are saying this interface is connected to some pins of the chip. They are connected to the outside world of the chip. Okay, so same thing for both. Make external. Now, this is connected to switches. This is connected to LEDs. Now, in this case, the pin constraints 
you should do manually okay so you should save your block design and you should run synthesis top module so we didn't click generate wrapper create hdl wrapper okay okay you need to run synthesis and uh, after synthesis you need to go to io planning and do pin constraint for leds and switches that doesn't happen automatically in this case because uh, he doesn't know or only because we call them leds doesn't mean they will be automatically connected to led okay mm -hmm. so so you need to manually do pin assignment after synthesis so you can go synthesis okay if you go to address editor you will see gpa control the base address is automatically assigned so when you write the software if you want to write to leds you just write to this base address if you want to read from the switches you need to read from the base address plus four because switches are connected to reg one and although in the code you you saw like the address of register one is one it is internally divided by four all the addresses so from processor point of view that register address is still four okay so keep that in mind so when you are reading you should read from base address plus four so you get the switch status and when you are writing you should write to the base address so that it goes to the led so the code will look exactly like the code that you already wrote for uh, controlling the X, uh, signs xcgpau code no difference now let it run here in parallel i would like to show you one more thing now remember the signing gpio there was an option when you double click the ip you can edit uh, some parameters like uh, what should be the width of the gpio interface and uh, such things right so you can do same thing here also currently these are the uh, options coming and you can't edit uh, any of them actually okay so that feature we will add why i am doing it because this eight leds and eight slide switches they are specific to z board suppose you want to use the same ip with another board uh, you should be able to do it and suppose that board has only five led even on that board suppose you want to connect this interface to the uh, five push button instead of the eight slide switches so this should be four down to zero instead of seven down to zero so there should be some option for customization so that's also possible so to do that again we have to edit our original ip that's why uh, as I said before, it's important to have this project which was used for editing this IP. So I am going and opening that project again. This project, okay. No, don't close this project. Let it run. so what we need to do is here we have hard coded seven down to zero led and seven down to zero switches instead of that you should parameterize them so let me say parameter and let's say integer type parameter or you can just neglect it also led with let's say eight and another parameter switch with equal to let's say eight okay and instead of seven down to zero here i will say led with minus one and here switch width minus four makes sense so same thing we have to do here also in gpa control so 
So let me put these two parameters here also. And these two here also. Okay, so wherever we have LEDs, LED is equal to slave reg zero. Actually, the width of slave reg zero, if you see, is is 32 actually. Okay, so when you assign a 32 bit bit wide register to 8 bit LED, it will always start from the LS bit. So the lower eight are going here. So it's perfectly fine. This width can go up to 32 actually. Fine. So we have changed the source code. One more thing is here we need to do the parameter mapping. So this LED width that I am specifying on the top module should be propagated to this module, the instantiated one. For that we need to do so called the port, uh, like port mapping, we need to do something called the parameter mapping. So, which is similar. So you take the parameter in the uh, sub module, which is LED width, and you map it to this parameter on the top module. Okay, so it will, it will look like dot LED width, LED width, and dot switch width, switch width. That's it. Okay, so the syntax is module name, parameter mapping, instance name, port mapping. Okay, save it and open our IP exact now. And now you'll see file group customization parameter. There is some change thing here. If you click here and click merge changes from customization parameter wizard you will see our two parameters listed here hidden parameters led width and switch width now we don't want them to be hidden so double click it and choose visible in customization gui and you can give the default value 8 okay Similarly, switch width visible default value 8. Okay. And go to review and package and say repackage. So, error from somewhere else, I guess. Okay, I'm going to close it. Now I'm coming back to my old project. So as I mentioned before, synthesis is over. So you should do the pin constraint for both LEDs and switches and implement and test on hardware that you can do. What I wanted to show was, let me reopen the block design. When I reopen the block design, you will see a warning here. IP catalog is out of date. So we were automatically found out uh, something has changed to the change to the IP which is used in your block design. Okay, so this IP was already used, but in parallel you edited it. So he found it out. So we have to click this one, refresh IP. And at the bottom, he will show something called IP status. And he's saying like, GPIO control, that IP has changed and you need to upgrade it. So I'm just clicking upgrade selected. Okay, things got upgraded. Now if you double click it, you will see these two options here, LED width, switch width, and they are eight. Now if you want to change them to 5, we can change it to 5 and that gets reflected here. Now it became 4 down to 0 instead of 7 down to 0. Right? This is how you can create customization. So you are actually changing in the GUI, but what happens is 
here itself I can show you. Uh, near hierarchy, you can see this option, IP sources. So if I expand that, you can see your IP here. And give me a second. We need to say something like generate output product. Give me a second. I just wanted to show what uh, Vivado is doing in the background. What he actually does is he actually goes and fetches all those Verilog source code from the from the folder where you have kept them and you can see this is exactly the source code that we were using see this is the source code which we which we actually save and he modifies whatever change we are doing in the GUI in that source code. For example, the, if we change the width here in the GUI, that will get reflected in the Verilog source code there. Okay, so that's what he is basically doing. So that's why if you change any parameter here in the GUI, you have to resynthesize and re-implement because you are effectively changing in the Verilog source code. Okay, so the remaining you can try yourself. You can do pin assignment, you can implement and you can export to SDK and you can test whether your IP code is working or not. Thank you.